Honey, let me tell you, one time <laughs> I was on a movie set and literally the gangsters were funding the movie. And Honey, let me let you know one time I was on a film set and in a real sense, the hoodlums were subsidizing the film and they were involving the film as a laundromat. Wesley Kill appears to have mixed the pot in Hollywood with his new comments, which some accept in a roundabout way, get down on unmistakable figures like Tyler Perry. What's going on, I imply, that returns to the 1800s right mid-19th century. It's been an issue in this country, starting from the starting kills, seems to communicate disappointment over the business propensity for pigeonholing darker-looking people in jobs that propagate hurtful generalizations of brutality inside the African-American population. We had an adequate number of pictures of us being sellers, and you know degenerates, and unhumanly. I wasn't what I would have rather not added to that is by all accounts supporting for a more nuanced and comprehensive depiction of people of color in the media. It's quite important that this isn't the initial time worries about racial generalizations in Hollywood have been raised. So what did Wesley say roughly a long time back there was an eminent mix in media outlets concerning the expected restoration of New Jack City? A movie where Wesley Kills played held a conspicuous part over 10 years earlier this prospect produced significant interest. In light of the fact that the first film had both slung Kills to distinction and brought him significant monetary achievement anyway, it had likewise been buried in debate, condemned for sustaining pessimistic generalizations of African Americans as lawbreakers New Jack City, coordinated by Mario Van Peebles and delivered in 1991 was a dirty wrongdoing show that investigated the exchange New York City Wesley Kills depicted the magnetic yet savage ruler Nino Brown. While the film was a business achievement, its depiction of African-American characters raised worries about its likely effect on building up unsafe generalizations. I didn't feel that was where our kin should have been at, and we had an adequate number of pictures of us being vendors and you know degenerates and unhumanly in a gallant and significant move, pointed toward testing the predominant story that propagated generalizations about his local area, Wesley Kills made a striking stride by straightforwardly uncovering his choice to decline a main job in the continuation of the film his principal position, which focused on credibility and conscious portrayal offered a reverberating expression Anyway, this brave demonstration appeared to have blended debate inside media outlets for certain people apparently feeling awkward with a disturbance of this state of affairs that they were attempting to make another Jack City to in light of the fact that Nino made due toward the finish of Infuse City. Definitely they came to me with that thought multiple times in a definitely as per reports the star communicated his contempt when gotten some information about the chance of another Jack City reboot. I'm not related with it. I don't have anything to do with it. At all kills, told Creek Obi of Shadow. An act he proceeded with I figure a few things ought to be let be assuming they worked at the time, considering the present situation. And the story was worked around things that were flow I could do without reproducing the way of life for what under the flow conditions of qualms about playing the seller from the very beginning, really, I turned the film two or multiple times when he previously moved toward me. Since I wasn't that wasn't where my head was at you realize the morning meal club has Charlemagne the God additionally destroyed the possibility of redoing New Jack City. They truly conversed with me about making it happen. And I've told them, no assuming I had a dime for each time I've said, no, it's settled. It's a wrap, the Bronx local said to say the very least individuals that run media outlets were excessively unsettled about his turn in their hatred. Evidently ended up being more clear over the course of the years, as things turned out to be considerably more hard for kills, particularly when the entertainer, who was known for his macho man status, was getting jobs that were much less like his image during an appearance with Imprint from take to check television. The entertainer talked about how he definitely disapproved of his job in the film Rising Sun when he was gotten some information about gossipy tidbits about him feeling some sort of way about not doing what's needed in the film. 
Kills cleared up the air well. It wasn't so much that I was awkward. With the amount of he possessed to do, it was exactly the way that he responded and answered specific things in the most natural-sounding way for Kills. He accepted the person was a little wimpish the star made sense of that his personality, resembling that wasn't connected with his character, yet was more about the character of the person, requiring a legitimate air. He was somewhat of somewhat wimpish for me. You know, and given the sort of occupation, that he had, you know, commanded a specific measure of power, so I needed to bring that power out the entertainer's significant clash with the person was that he had a risky work, had as such expected a little edge to him. But since the elites in the business had an order to whip his manliness, however much they could he didn't get his direction that anyway, didn't prevent him from grumbling about it's okay in the event that you realize he was legitimate and wrong. Yet essentially, you realize he had executed a specific measure of power, as you could presumably tell with the movement up till this point. Standing in opposition to them was another move kills made that the business was excessively distraught about as of now. You could say they had enough from him, as of now since we should simply say it down poured fire in his vocation. From here on, regardless kills disclosures about the business, endeavoring to categorize him into cliché jobs, because of his race, only started to expose an unavoidable issue. Various different big names have boldly voiced comparative claims, focusing on Hollywood's profoundly dug-in predispositions and practices these records. All in all highlight the critical requirement for foundational change inside media outlets where skilled people of variety have for quite some time been restricted by slender, frequently destructive depictions, truth be told. In an as-of-late re-emerged interview that sent shockwaves through Hollywood humorist Chris Rock, caused a commotion by recommending that producer Tyler Perry could have coincidentally advanced colorism in his famous motion pictures, Rock's remarks touched off a searing discussion in media outlets about portrayal and variety in Perry's work. The Frank comic offered his frightening comments during a genuine conversation on the expected destiny of the late Tupac Shaker. Had he been alive today, Rock expressed Tupac could have been a political pioneer in the event that he were alive yet. Again, Tupac may be in a Tyler Perry film at the present time, so you didn't realize he may be Tupac. Maybe the awful darker-looking sweetheart in a Tyler Perry film in Tyler Perry motion pictures. There was in every case oak there's a lady, and she typically was in an awful relationship, and the individual she was in an awful relationship with would in general have hazier skin rocks remarks. Cause to notice a common subject in Tyler Perry's movies. Frequently darker-looking male characters were depicted as bad guys, while lighter-cleaned male characters were portrayed as the heartfelt legends who safeguarded female heroes from grieved connections. This account structure ignited worries that Perry's movies could unintentionally support to destructive generalizations and advance colorism inside the African-American people group, regardless Stone isn't the main individual who has gotten down on Tyler Perry for the supposed colorism in his movies a Twitter client, willingly volunteered to transparently voice her discontent with Tyler Perry's movies, featuring what she saw as a racial inclination in his collection of work, The Vitally Peculiar. I'm time frame anyway her study went past this underlying point she proceeded to declare I'm not a Tyler Perry fan. So this is the thing I got to say it's interesting the way that he got this cashed to do everything except the proper thing the lady attested that Tyler Perry held a hidden anxiety toward white individuals, which in her view was impacting his imaginative choices and decisions, shockingly her opinion, resounded with a more extensive crowd as many dark entertainers started sharing their own encounters and communicating hesitance to team up with Perry again. This opinion was exemplified by one such entertainer who reserved their spot about working with Perry completely clear, and they said they cherished the content, yet they didn't know how the movie planned to end up, so they passed Tyler Perry's momentous climb from the Atlanta theater scene to turning into a significant film industry player is unquestionable, especially on account of his famous media series, 
by and by Perry's process, has been set apart by debate regardless in the wildly cutthroat domain of Hollywood. It's normal for people to depend on unconventional strategies in their quest for progress, and Tyler Perry is by all accounts no outsider to this unique. In the wake of making significant progress in the domain of film industry, it's Tyler Perry broadened his venture into TV remarkably with a broadly acclaimed sitcom place of agony. Yet as exchanges warmed up for a rewarding partnership bargain and the advancement of a side project series, named Meet the Browns a huge contention ejected by reports, Perry stood out as truly newsworthy when he picked to excuse four scholars who had looked for association, gets this move, touched off a disagreeable question inside media outlets, revealing insight.